Today guys, it's Barrett with Espresso Outlet. I wanted to do a quick tutorial on getting started with Artisan. I feel like if I went through a few things that I didn't really understand and made it into one short video, I think it'll help a lot of people get started with Artisan much quicker. So to begin with, we have a full dedicated video on setting up your specific roaster based off the operating system that you've chosen, Mac or Windows. Uh, to begin with though, just really quick, you need to download a settings file specifically for your roaster. And I'm not going to reload it, but it's under the help load settings menu. As soon as you've loaded your settings, you'll need to go over and select your COM port as well as change your baud rate to 9600. So once we get everything set up and we click the on button, it should take a moment. And when we see the temperature show up on the side, that's how we know it's connected. Another way that I like to test if it's connected is to turn on the drum. And you might be able to hear it in the background, the drum did just turn on. So I know it's connected and we have a little bit of control over the roaster. If you don't set up that settings file or config your port correctly, you may end up having some issues. So the next thing that I usually like to do, we don't have a background loaded and a background, I, I feel like it's a good idea to load a background just for something to follow. And if you're gonna do manual roasting, it's still nice to have a background loaded just so that you can know where you're trying to uh, have your turning point and your first crack and your drop temp. And it just makes it a lot easier for me to learn to roast. So to do that, we're going to hit roast background. And then in the bottom, it has a load button. I have one that I've been liking to use. It's on our website at colliderroasters.com. You can download this. I'll put a link below. So... We're just going to hit OK and you can see that this has been a curve that somebody created in the Artisan software. They actually do have, um, it is a software to design your own curve. So you can save a curve if you just did a manual roast and you really liked it. You can just click save the curve, but you can also go in and you can create a curve from scratch. So that's what someone has done here. Now let's go through what some of the stuff means. ET, it stands for exhaust temperature. It is the probe, it's in the top of your roaster and it's towards the back near the exhaust. So that's kind of just the ambient temp within the, the roasting chamber of the roaster itself. Next we have BT, that stands for bean temp. There is another temperature probe in the front of your roaster and the beans run through that temperature probe. So your exhaust temperature could potentially be much higher in the beginning and then when you drop your beans, your bean temp is gonna be quite low. The next is this Delta BT or Triangle BT. And this is also known as your ROR or rate of rise. And the way that I explain this to people is if it says 13 Delta BT, uh, it pretty much predicts uh, within about a minute from now, your beans are going to raise by 13 degrees, or it's raising by however many degrees it states there per minute. The next few things are just set values based off of some of the sliders or some of the buttons. Uh, you do have, while I'm on that, that subject, you do have sliders off to the side, so you can slide this up to 57% quite easily. It's really nice and quick. And you can see off to the side, um, we have these buttons here. And if you just want to do like a quick click, and I just hit 100, it actually just went up to a 100. If you click 60, it automatically went to 60. So it's pretty nice to have these buttons where you can jump, but also know that you can use the sliders. So we have our drum which is the drum that spins inside the roaster. We have our damper. That's actually on the Kaleido tablet. They call it, uh, what do they call it? 
it's essentially your exhaust. So you have a fan that that pulls all the smoke. They call it smoke. They, it pulls all the smoke and some of the heat out of the roasting chamber. So you can vary the speed of this damper. You can hear I just turned mine on. Next, you have the heater. And that's 0 to 100%. And then it was a little bit confusing between the heater and the set value. So the set value I use as my charge temperature. So there's actually some charts out there. I need to find some good examples to share on our website. But based off of the grams that you select, you're going to set your set value to a specific temperature. I've been doing about 170. And then I usually just hit my heater to 100. So what that's going to do is that's going to start preheating your roaster. Make sure that your drum is on probably 100%, 80 to 100, and your damper, I usually set about 20 to get going. But the set value is your charge temperature. As you begin to roast, it's actually going to go above that 170 at a certain point. But if you charge too hot in the beginning, you're going to put too much heat into the beans very quickly. So next, let's talk about the graph itself. Along the bottom axis, the x-axis is time in minutes, and then the y-axis is temperature in degrees Celsius. Right now, the Collider Roasters are only for Celsius. Uh, that might change in the future, though. If we look, we can kind of see a green, a yellow, and it's kind of like a red-brown uh, bar region on our y-axis. The green pretty much stands for the color that it corresponds to. So the green is your drying phase. It's when your, your beans are still green. Next, you have your yellow or your mallard phase. And the mallard phase is the point where there's a reaction between the amino acids and the bean. And it reduces the sugars to allow those beans to start becoming brown. And then we have this top kind of red-brown bar, and that is going to be our development. So it's really nice how they have this set up with all the different colors. Uh, if you look at the, the graph colors itself, your exhaust temperature, if this were roasting right now, would be red. Your bean temperature would be kind of this dark brown. Your delta BT would be this lighter brown. You will see a lot of kind of just busy stuff going on in this region. And what it's doing is it's recording if you made adjustments to your heater, if you made speed adjustments to your drum, damper speed, and so on. And the reason it does that is if you were to ever do a PID roast, which a PID roast is using those thermocouples or those temperature probes in your roaster, and it's going to automatically adjust your roaster to roast those beans the same the next time. So it's just keeping track of the speeds and the temperatures and everything that you chose for that specific roast. Next, uh, let's, let's set up a roast. So if we wanted to set up a new roast, I would go to Roast Properties. And this is where we're going to name the roast. So let's say Brazil, my first roast. And we could say these are Brazil beans. And we're going to say that it is 500 grams green and I don't know, 460 roasted. These are just kind of made up numbers. But you can enter all of this information in here. If there's any additional notes that you want to add, you can click the second tab. And you can say, there was a lot of chaff. I don't know. I don't know why you'd write that. If you do cupping at the end, you can add all your cupping notes. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll have cupping notes from the bean distributor itself. And they will copy paste or transcribe transcribe them over in this area. So um, let's see. We'll just keep it simple. And then we'll click OK. So you can see 
it changed this to Brazil, my first roast. So that's going to be really nice as you create more profiles and you do your, your save. Uh, you're going to be able to easily see, you can export the graphs. We're going to show some of that at the end. So the next, um, we actually need to be roasting. As soon as we start roasting, there's going to be some additional information show up at the top. We'll go over that here in a second. Uh, some additional cool stuff. So we can go to config and then curves. And we can go to UI. And this is more of just a fun feature, I think. And if you hit this load button, I'm going to go find a Kaleido logo. And click OK. You can change how dark it is. And when we click OK, now we have our Kaleido logo. I think that's pretty cool. You can change yours to have whatever. The next thing that is kind of nice, if you don't like this, this light background, I, I feel like this one's pretty easy to see. You can go over to Themes, Artisan. I think you have to turn this off. Let's turn this off. So before making that change, you'll want to make sure that you're not connected to your roaster. Let's go back to config and then themes. And under artisan, you have a handful of different themes that you can pick from. So let's just change it to midnight. It's going to change your theme to this black background. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit darker you can change your graph color i feel like this one's a little bit hard to see but remember this is a background so it's more opaque and when you start roasting it's going to be a lot brighter so if this one actually might be pretty nice i've not used this one let's try just like one more oops that's not what i wanted at all let's do focus You can play around with this, it's pretty fun. I think that's the one that we had originally. So, okay, one more. The Alio one is super ugly, I can tell you that. It's this crazy purple color. So, that's a really neat feature and it allows you to customize your artisan screen. You can customize these buttons. We're not going to go over that today. That's a little bit more involved. But I did want to go over just the basics of what everything means in Artisan. So while this roaster heats up, I'll go over the graph a little bit more. And I'll show you the next portion of, of the settings that I want to explain a little bit better. So at the beginning, we have our charge temp. And on this background that we loaded... It, it charges about 179 degrees. Uh, so that's what the charge stands for. The TP, that stands for your turning point, and it gives a time as well as a degrees. So you're trying to hit this turning point. That That's my set value, just hit over there. So as soon as it hits this turning point, it, it says in about 50 seconds, it needs to be about 87.5 degrees. And this is going to be the point at which the beans stop going down in temperature and they start to absorb some of the heat. Next, we have the DE. The DE stands for dry end. So in this case, it's about 150 degrees Celsius and takes about 4 minutes and 20 seconds. And if you look, this is that green portion of the graph. I, I didn't change the background uh, when I heated up my roaster a minute ago so I have it on a different background than before sorry about that so you can see the dry end is ideally through this region next since this is our mallard phase you can see the dry end starts there and the first crack ends there or begins there ends there begins there so it's anticipating at about eight minutes and about 195 degrees, we're gonna hit first crack. It's not guaranteed, but that's the way that this graph has been set up. 
Last, they, they like their beans, I guess, pretty dark. So 208 degrees, they dropped at 9 minutes and 14 seconds. Usually I try to keep my roasts at least 9 to 10 minutes long. So I'd probably try to draw this out just a little bit more. But that's what all of these items mean. So if we were to hit start, and I don't have beans in this because I know I'll probably mess up the roast if I'm trying to explain it. But when we hit the start button... You can see our graph begins to move. So what it's doing is it's actually taking our exhaust temp and our bean temp and it's beginning to plot all of that information on our graph. At the top, these are the items that I wanted to show you. We have the TP, dry, and FC. Now what this is, is this is artisan essentially calculating when it thinks all these things are going to happen. And to do that, we're going to hit, in this case, charge. And normally we would throw the beans in and this graph is going to go way down. So once we get out where we think that the, the drying has ended, we're going to hit dry end. And I don't know if it's going to show it, but what it's going to do is, based off of the, the temperatures in the machine, it's going to say, based off of the, the amount of beans that you put in and your charge temp and where your returning point is, we think that your dry is going to be done at approximately 7 minutes or 5 minutes. So that works as a calculator to allow you to increase or decrease your heat. Very nice. Similarly, so we're going to hit dry end and as this graph goes up and we get to the first crack, you're going to listen for that kind of like rapid popcorn popping sound and it's actually going to start calculating between your dry end and your first crack start and it's going to say your first crack I think is going to start about seven minutes. So yet again, it's doing a calculation for you and if you think you're going way too fast, or possibly too slow it allows you to adjust your heat so we're going to do a just dedicated roast as i explain this a little bit more just on the screen alone but i hope this helps you get started uh, we didn't actually do a roast today so this graph looks really bad just just understand that but that is the basics of the artisan software you can really get into a lot more complicated really neat stuff um, that'll come at a different time but this is enough, I believe, to get you going quite easily with the Artisan software in your Collider Roaster. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. That helps us. And let us know if there's anything that you want to see or if you have anything that you want explained a little bit better. And we'll try to make a video on it or a blog post or just get back to you. So thanks for watching.